Hey Artners! Today I have an alcohol marker tutorial for you guys. We're going to be using a variety of alcohol markers to render this really cute mermaid for Mermaid. This is a time lapse and cut down version of a much longer live art workshop that I held here on YouTube. So I'll have that linked in the description below. I'm starting with printed blue lines that have already been penciled and corrected. And I'm going to ink with the Tombow Furinusuke uh, brush pins and I'm using blue pink and purple for this So my goal is to create a colored line art using these color brush pins and colored line arts can be great If you want to keep the vibrancy if you don't want to add too much contrast by inking with black So I'm going to use these colors to kind of prejudge where I'm going to use certain colors later on so for the starfish and for the skin, I'm using pink. For the main body of the tail, I'm going to use blue. And then for the fins and for the hair, I'm going to use purple. And I apologize that my hair keeps getting into the shot. My eyesight is pretty dang poor at this point in time. And when you see me cross over into the shot, it's because I'm trying to get a better look at what I'm doing. For areas where I wanted a little bit more contrast, like the eyes, I inked with the purple as well. And the Tombow Furinusuke uh, brush pins come in, I want to say like eight different colors, so you're not just limited to pink, purple, and blue. They have yellow and orange, red, green, brown, and of course black. I'd love to see them offer maybe a couple of greens and a couple of browns, like a yellow ochre type brown would be really nice, or a sepia type brown and maybe a spring green, and then maybe a dark phthalo blue green would be nice. But I really like these brush pins. They are alcohol and water safe, so you can use them to ink your mixed media pieces. And I like that they're available in a variety of bright colors. We've definitely got some Lisa Frank influence going on here with the mermaid. Speaking of this mermaid, if you want to color along with me, you can do so. I'll have a link in the description below. My Gumroad has two different line arts available. We have a black and white version of this line art, and we have a color version of this line art. And of course, my wonderful art nerds over on Patreon, patreon.com slash natosoup, get both line arts as well as dozens of other line arts free for them to use and to download so if you'd like free line arts in your box every month you could consider becoming a patron and supporting what we're doing here on this channel i don't see any outside sponsorship i don't have a deal with tombow i don't have a deal with strathmore which is the paper that i'm inking on we're using strathmore smooth bristol the 300 series i don't have a deal with copic or prismacolor I'm just an artist working on her own. So if you like what I do and you want to help me continue to do it, joining me over on Patreon is a wonderful way to make sure that I'll continue to make content like this. Of course, if you can't do that, that's totally understandable. I know times are hard for people. One of the other ways you can greatly help this channel is by telling other people how much you enjoy watching my videos and linking these videos to them. Helping me grow this channel is a great way to attract a larger audience, to attract a little bit more ad money, and to possibly attract further sponsorships where perhaps I get supplies sent to me to review and to test, or perhaps we even get paid to make certain types of tutorials. So if you enjoy this content, joining me on Patreon or telling people about the work that I do are two great ways to help me continue to do it. I 
also want to point out that this video has been time-lapsed by about four times. Not every segment has been time-lapsed as much, but the main marker portion of this took about three hours to do. So, now that I've finished inking this line art, I'm going to allow it to cure to dry for 24 hours. Then I'm going to use a soft white vinyl eraser to erase the graphite underneath. Then I'll scan it so that I have the line art available to art nerds and on Gumroad. And then I'm ready to begin markering this piece. So for this workshop, I wanted to use a variety of alcohol markers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start swatching my markers and select what I plan on using for this piece. So I grabbed any markers from my collection that seemed like they'd fit kind of the color story I had in mind. I wanted to use hot pinks, I wanted to use oranges, teals, and purples for this piece. And I wanted skin tones that were kind of saturated because I'd planned on doing this alcohol marker and then a little bit of watercolor on top. So I'm swatching Neo Pico colors, I'm swatching Copic, I'm swatching Prismacolor, basically anything that seems like it would fit what I'm looking for, I'm gonna use in this piece because most alcohol markers can be used interchangeably. They work well with one another. And when I review alcohol markers, which I've done a lot of alcohol marker reviews here on the channel and over on the blog, I'm always looking for how well they play with my favorite alcohol marker brand. So that would be Copic, Blick Studio Brush, and Prismacolor. I always end up swatching more colors than I'm actually going to use, but that gives me kind of a larger selection to draw from, and sometimes I end up grabbing those colors and using them anyway. So the colors I ended up using for this piece are Neo Picos C401, Neo Picos C405, Copic E00, Copic E93, Prismacolor B PB17, Prismacolor PB154, Prismacolor one PB14, Prismacolor PB6, Prismacolor PB280, Prismacolor PB52, Prismacolor PB177, Copic RV25, Copic RV06, Copic RV55, uh, Copic RV66, Prismacolor PB171, Prismacolor 1 or uh, PB27 it looks like. Sorry, it's very dark. Prismacolor PB127, Prismacolor PB43, Prismacolor 179, uh, Copic B quadruple zero, Copic double zero B05, Prismacolor PB37, Prismacolor PB33, Copic BG23, and then Copic YG01, and I'll have a link in the description to the colors that I used. So in the full live stream, we talked about all kinds of different things, but one of the things I made it a point to do was to read the colors that I was using as I was using and try to explain what I'm looking for. So I started with Neopico C401, and then I applied a layer of B quadruple zero, Copic B quadruple zero to the shadows of the eyes. Once both of those had kind of a chance to dry, I went in and did another layer with Neo Pico C405. And what I was looking for was very kind of synthetic skin tones, very Lisa Frank kind of skin tones where they're almost fluorescent yellow. On the live stream, I really had trouble getting my camera to pick up exactly what I was seeing. So the colors are a little bit off in the live stream. They're a little more accurate here. For her eyes, I wanted to have these really cool yellow orange eyes. So I used PB1, uh, PB17. PB14 and PB6 to shade the eyes. Then I started coloring in the stars using a, I want to say a lighter Copic than I actually have listed here and I apologize for that, but it's probably PB17, which was the Prismacolor color now that I'm watching myself do it. And again, if you want accurate full step-by-step -step instructions, as well as talk about whether or not art school or even art classes is right for you, discussing other art materials and talking about my papers of choice, you can watch the full live stream. Every Saturday, I do art live streams, art workshops here on the channel, and we do all kinds of different things. It's not just one type of thing. 
This one was alcohol markers and mermaids to celebrate Mermay. I only got a chance to do one mermaid, so I wanted to really make it count. And I also wanted to talk about doing colored line arts and also doing a little bit of mixed media. But we've also done betta fish on black watercolor paper. We've done Posca poison dart frogs. We've done green tree frogs in alcohol marker. We've done water lilies in watercolor. So we've done a lot of different things and I'm always open to suggestions and fun ideas for what the next art workshop can be. These art workshops are Saturday evenings at 8 p.m. Central Time since I'm in Tennessee. So it's going to kind of depend on what time zone you live in. Uh, 8 is a little late for me, but I thought 8 was really good for my friends in the Pacific time zones um, since it's not super early for them and it's not super duper late for my friends in the Eastern time zone, but I am also considering doing day uh, during the day live streams to help keep company with people who are working from home right now. And you can find out more information about upcoming live streams on my community tab. I also announce them on Instagram, Twitter, and on my Patreon. So there's plenty of places where you can hear about these live streams. I also announce them in my Discord server, The Paint Box. I'll put a link to The Paint Box down in the description below. So you guys can see, I have the swatch sheet just off to the side. I'm referencing my colors constantly. And as I was talking about other things, I was working on building up and developing her skin tone. Basically, I do three tones of skin, blush, and then I go in with another skin tone. Now for her hair, originally, I was thinking about doing it just all pink so you see I'm blocking it in with a really really light pink here um, it looks to be it PB 208 which was not one of the colors that I originally listed but and I wanted to do an ombre effect on her hair so um, for those of you who are familiar with ombre in terms of fashion it really means like a gradation of color so I wanted to do uh, like a darker pink into a lighter pink and then pink shadows but as I was going along I got kind of ambitious and I decided what would be even more fun since she has all these stars in her hair and her hair is supposed to look kind of like clouds is I thought it'd be really fun to make her hair look like sunset hair so to do that um, I kind of started doing the base of the pink ombre hair and then I was like okay let's do sunset so I grabbed a couple of darker pinks so I went ahead and I grabbed my swatch sheet and I figured those out again. And I also grabbed a couple of red violets and some purples. And then I basically broke her hair down into zones. So we're gonna leave the very front bang a much lighter pink. Then in the towards going towards the back, we're gonna have the darker, more saturated pinks and red violets. And then the hair behind her is going to be purple. And that's gonna give us a really cool sunset effect. So I have some watercolor tutorials where I talk about painting neon rainbow hair and rainbow hair. So if you're interested in more rainbow hair fun, I have more tutorials on how to do that here on the channel. But basically it just requires some patience, thinking things through and taking things a little bit slower than you might take them if you were doing it all one color. And this rainbow hair really gave her kind of a Barbie aesthetic, which I'm fine with. I also worked some of that purple into the front, the hair coming not in front of her, but not as behind her, just so that we had a smoother transition with the zones. And with hair, I'm really reliant on using the brush to get kind of the strokes of the hair, to get the motion of the hair. So when I'm rendering hair, I don't just fill it in like I would if I were doing like a coloring book where I'm aiming for a, a one layer fill. I would I fill it in using strokes that kind of follow the movement and the volume of the hair. 
and I try to ease up on my pressure as I'm entering kind of a highlight on the hair. If you guys are interested in tutorials on how I color different hair textures, different types of hair, um, I can get you covered. So I apologize for that. One of the viewers asked me to zoom in using my webcam and uh, I, I said I couldn't and then Joseph got up and physically moved the webcam, which kind of messed up my second camera device. But I do apologize. Um, the webcam only goes so close. It's on a balance system and it just can't really go any closer, closer. So if you need to zoom in on what I'm doing, unfortunately, you're gonna need to do full screen and then zoom in using that. So for the ears, I'm using kind of a bright teal color. This is also what I'm going to use for the tail. And I'm filling that in with BG23, adding my secondary shade with PB33, and then my third shade with PB37. And a lot of the shading techniques I'm using here, I talk about in another mermaid coloring video. It's easy blends and shade, and it uses just uh, tri-blends blends consisting of three colors to make up more sophisticated sort of blending techniques and I'll link that in the description below it's a great tutorial for people who are kind of newer to alcohol markers or they want to do something a little bit different with their markers so what I'm doing now that I have the base filled in I did a second layer of the BG 23 since with Copics you can often get three layers of color and I'm trying to leave some rim lighting on the scales to convey that uh, the light is hitting these scales to give a better sense of depth and I'm allowing that layer to dry so we can get a stronger transition when we apply our PB 37 one of our shadow colors so I went in and I added some more pink to the skin I kind of reinforced the blush on her cheeks and on her lips and I kind of added some additional color to the stars in her hair and to the stars on her star bra and you can really see the rim lighting going on now because I'm leaving even more scales not quite fully colored and I'm also leaving a lot of rim lighting on the exterior of her tail. So it's handy to keep the reference sheet always on hand because it allows me to select colors that really work. So when I was going through, I circled the colors I wanted to use as I used them as a mental reference for myself. So for her tail, I'm starting with Copic, or no, Prismacolor PB179. And I'm using a technique very similar to what I would use for the hair where I'm using kind of a flicking coloring motion to create these striations in the tail itself. And one of the chatters, Indie Kitty had requested that I do a Beta Fish Mermaid. I've actually done Beta Fish Mermaids several times. Um, they're in both of my mermaid coloring packs, 31 Days Under the Waves, and my Mer Bay coloring pack. And I also have videos here on the channel where I show you how I ink them. But I took influence from that and I wanted to bring some of that into this piece. So I'm aiming for the sort of striations, the sort of crenellations you see on a beta fish's fins. I wanted to bring that and add additional texture to this, this mermaid. Since, as I mentioned in the live stream, sometimes when I'm working with alcohol markers, I feel like my art can start to kind of become kind of plastic and kind of stagnant because we have the really saturated colors and then we have the really smooth blends and then I often will avoid what I sometimes feel like are cheap sort of textures, but I think bringing texture into your marker art can be good. It can add a lot of liveliness and a lot of realism and a lot of depth to your work. So once the PB37 on the tail dried, I'm going over it with another layer of PB30. Actually, that might be the first layer of PB7. I may have done two layers of PB33. And I'm just gonna blend a little bit of the PB37 out with the prior color, PB33. That's gonna soften the transition a little bit so it's not like a bunch of harsh cast shadows. And then once the PB179 dried, I'm gonna go over it with Copic B05. Leaving a lot of those striations, those highlights still visible in the tail.
So at this point, I wanted to do something kind of interesting to break up the tail, to add some more texture, to add some more visual interest. So I'm tearing sheets of paper to make a really cheap, easy mask. So it's just computer paper. And I spritzed it with some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. And that gave a really fine sort of pebbly uh, appearance. Then I dripped some masking or some rubbing alcohol onto the tail and what that does is rubbing alcohol is a propyl alcohol is a solvent to alcohol markers they use slightly different alcohols in the body of it but it's still going to reactivate those colors and it's going to push those colors to the back of the paper so you get kind of like a pebbly texture where some areas are a little bit lighter than others and then the areas where you drip the rubbing alcohol you're going to get kind of like an octopus sucker technique and after that had a chance to kind of dry out I went back and reinforced some of the shadows in the tail with Prismacolor PB 37 and while that was drying I also went into the fins and the tail and added more to added another layer of texture and detail detail in detail and I'm trying to create a sense of shadow and contrast. So I want the tail part that's kind of behind her to recede into the distance. And I'm also trying to create a cast shadow where her arms overlap her tail. Then I'm going in to the fins with Prismacolor PB43. And I'm not gonna add striations all over the place, just enough to really give a sense of movement and uh, direction. So the marker portion of this is finished. It's very beautiful, very brilliant, very saturated colors. I could leave it as is, but I wanted to add some watercolor elements to it. So I'm going to use blue painter's tape to tape it down around all four corners. So Calvin asked a really good question during this stream. Um, Usually when I'm doing mixed media or watercolor, I use a 140 pound cellulose watercolor paper. So maybe like Blick uh, Studio watercolor paper, or I use Canson XL or Canson Montfort or Fluid Easy Block cellulose watercolor papers because those take alcohol marker and they take watercolor well. For today's demonstration, I'm using Strathmore 300 series Smooth Bristol, which is usually not designed to take watercolor. So what I'm doing right now is I'm applying a very thin wash, a very watery wash of Holbein Phthalo Blue Yellow Shade. So it's a cooler influenced blue that I felt would go well with this mermaid. Anyway, normally I don't paint on Strathmore Bristol, period, because I don't like how it handles the watercolor. It usually will dry very patchy. I can't really control the color nuance. And I would really rather work on a textured watercolor paper that's a little bit more receptive to both watercolor and to alcohol markers. The problem with these textured watercolor papers is they tend to be very thirsty, so they'll absorb the water. They, it evaporates quicker, but it will drain my alcohol markers and I wanted to work on a smoother surface for this. So I needed to take some precautions. So after I applied that wash of water to the background, I uh, stopped 
this camera and I used a hair dryer to kind of help with evaporation. And what I basically did is I waited until all the surface water, the surface sheen was gone. And then I just used a hair dryer to finish off the drying process. And I normally don't like using hair dryers in my watercolor. They can push the pigments around in ways I don't like. They can cause blooming in some of the colors where it gets too hot and it turns kind of chalky. So I personally don't normally recommend using hair dryers with watercolor. I was just doing that to expedite the process since nobody wants to sit around for 20 minutes and watch paint dry. So once that wash is dried, I'm going in with a thicker mix of the phthalo blue and applying that all over the mermaid. Now, realistically, I could have broken it down into two different washes where we use a lighter, thinner wash on the skin tone and then the thicker wash on the darker colors because it does tend to really desaturate the color, but I wanted it to have this really nice underwater kind of shadow or shaded effect. So at that point I had applied mostly just major shadows, let that dry and then I go in and I reapply the shadows particularly to the areas behind the mermaid to help create that sense of depth and also to some of the smaller areas that may have been missed in the initial painting. So for this I'm using a squirrel hair watercolor brush. I have some problems with squirrel hair. It was kind of a humid night and squirrel hair and synthetics tend to just drip all the paint down onto the paper on humid nights so you definitely want to be kind of careful with that it also tends to be kind of a softer floppier brush so if you're newer to watercolor if you're less confident with your brush skills you may want to avoid using squirrel hair brushes because they can be kind of frustrating to use so unfortunately i have another camera uh, goof but what I'm doing right now is I'm using a kind of thinnish mix of white gouache and I splattered that using a synthetic brush onto the illustration to give some more texture and to also give kind of this water spray effect or this sort of bubble effect then I'm going in and I'm using that same synthetic brush to add white highlights to the hair, to the eyes, to the fins, etc. to make the colors pop a bit more. I apologize that the camera is out of focus. I know how annoying that is to watch and I'm so sorry about that. With the dual recording setup, it can be somewhat difficult to keep an eye on both cameras without disrupting the stream. So if you would like to watch a version of this that doesn't necessarily have the camera flaws, you can watch the full live stream and there's way more detailed explanations and answers to questions and um, demonstrations in that since it hasn't been time-lapsed. But I'm just going through and I'm adding some white highlights to the fins, to some of the scales, etc. So you can see it really makes the colors pop a bit more. So I allowed this to dry, taped down on my desk for 24 hours. And that allows the Bristol, which is not really designed to take a lot of water. It's not designed to be a mixed media paper. It allows the Bristol to dry as flat as possible. I could have even put a brick, uh, not a brick, a book on top of it after it dried somewhat to encourage that. Then the next morning, I removed the blue painter's tape. So this is not included in the live stream. This is time-lapse video exclusive only. And I have my finished mermaid. I really enjoyed spending Saturday night hanging out, chatting, and rendering this beautiful mermaid, beautiful mermaid for everyone. This particular live stream, the chat was just so good. I had so much fun hanging out and talking to everybody. And it really made doing these art workshops worthwhile. I love answering questions. I love having conversations. And I love getting to know you guys a little bit better. And everyone was so sweet and so encouraging. It just really makes it a lot of fun for me as an artist to get to hang out with you guys. So... The materials we used were Tombow Furunosuke colored brush pins. We used a variety of alcohol markers and then we used a little bit of watercolor. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
And I hope to see you guys again soon. So here is our penciled blue line sketch. I had done most of the cleaning up on the computer, printed it out and penciled it. Here's our beautiful colored inks using the Tombow Furenusuke uh, brush pens and I'll have links in the descriptions to all the materials that I use so make sure you check below Here are our beautiful marker swatches in a variety of colors and a variety of brands because I am not brand exclusive Here is the finished marker portion of this illustration beautiful bright brilliant colors definitely could have left it as is and then finally here is our finished watercolor so i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope i'll see you guys again soon bye guys